just dancing. Do you know what I realized? What do you realize? Tomorrow's daylight savings time. <gasps> no, saying is it so? You're welcome. You just ruined my whole Saturday. I know. Thank you for that. I know, I know. Spring I know. forward, you're going to lose an hour. Lose an hour. And we already go to 8 o'clock church. Mm. So it's going to be like 7 o'clock church. But we get up early. I mean, we're up between 4.30 and 5.15 pretty much every day. That's brutal. So Jim was up at 2.30 this morning. I did not follow suit. I'm glad. He did get a little sleep on the couch. your day would be front. pretty much over at this yeah. point. <laughs> He'd be like, sorry, I'm done working. I'm going home now. <laughs> My work day is over. <laughs> Welcome Ooh. to Saturday Mornings with Olive and 2U Studios. We're here every single Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already done so, we invite you to subscribe to our podcast. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications and hit the thumbs up. We have a lot of fun here every single Saturday morning talking about what's new in the shop, all the beautiful yarn that Carolyn dyes, all the things going on. We've always got a knit along, a crochet along, a make along of some ilk going on usually, prizes aplenty, and all kinds of fun stuff on Saturdays. Um, or in the Yarn and Use, which is our Facebook group, which is in conjunction with our podcast. Everything's linked together. Everything's connected in the world. Let's sing Kumbaya. <laughs> right? So... Olive and 2U Studios is oliveandtoyou.com. And then the Yarny Use, Y A R N Y Use, E W E S, is our Facebook group. We are about almost 2,000 strong now. In there, there's no drama, no politics ever, seriously. And you can find out all the fun things. Plus, if you're in the Yarny Use group, you get access to special features that we do sometimes, which are curated. Um, groups of, of products or things that haven't actually hit the shop yet. So, or whimsies, which is yarn that's not an actual um, colorway that's been set in the shop, like one that we're going to do over and over. Repeatable colorways. Let me try to use my language. Use your words, Michelle. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. And then our newsletter goes out every single Saturday morning at 8 a.m. And it's the companion to this podcast. So you can see all the things we're talking about with the links embedded. So it makes it super easy. Are they commenting on your hat? I think they did. Oh, nice. Thank you all. Do y'all want to know? Do we want to talk about what it is? Let's talk about what it is. So it's the Bonner beanie, which is a beanie pattern that I designed and named it kind of for Connor because I used to call him Connor Bonner all the time. This is the other one. Yep. So that one is in um, Broody. Broody. On, they're both on Chesterton. This one's Spirit of Freedom and that one is Broody. And because we're talking about... I don't about, look good in hats. Um, <laughs> well, you don't even have it on right. Come on. I just don't look good um, in hats. <laughs> since we're featuring Chesterton yarn today anyway, um, I didn't get to see the... Um, the newsletter yet? Did you put patterns in? I'm assuming you did. You're awesome. Yes. So in the yes, we're featuring. We're spotlighting. He's got a spotlight on him. G.K. Chesterton, um, the namesake for our Chesterton yarn. I never understand how that is. Is the namesake the person it's named for, or the thing that's named of the person? The namesake is the original person, right? You don't know either. I don't know. All right. Anyway, correct us. I think it's the original. I think it's the original. Yeah. So G.K. Chesterton, who was a philosopher, a theologian of sorts, all kinds of things, an artist. Um, he was a big and bulky guy. And so our super bulky yarn is Chesterton. You know, all of our yarn bases are named after authors. And we try to incorporate into the naming, you know, some characteristic of the yarn that kind of matches a characteristic of the author. So Chesterton was a big guy, so he gets the super super bulky yarn. In your newsletter this morning, there's a little blurb about G.K. Chesterton. So you can read a little bit about him, and certainly you can do your own research on Wikipedia or wherever you like. He's an interesting guy who wrote a lot of really interesting books. Yes. So Chesterton Amazing is stories. super bulky yarn. You want to tell him about Chesterton? Yeah, so it is a super bulky yarn, which means it's going to knit fast. But what I love about Chesterton, so it's 80, let me just add this, it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. But it is single ply, and we don't have, we only have two bases that are single plies in our shop, which makes me sad because... The thing about single ply, even though it doesn't, this does not have silk in it, it has a sheen to it. And all single ply yarns seem to do that. 
And along with that sheen, it's very smooth to knit with. So this is a fast knit, not only because it's super bulky. So your projects go like, you know, but it also like slides it. off your needles like butter. Yeah. So it's an incredible yarn. I think we, I need to knit with it more, honestly. So in your newsletter, you do, you have a collection of patterns that we put together. I think there are nine of them. So there are, <clears throat> there's one more knit pattern, if I'm correct, than crochet patterns, but there's, there's two. So the beanie, I think has three patterns, two knit and one crochet. The rest of them have one knit and one crochet pattern that we have suggested for you using Chesterton, our super bulky yarn. And I'm just going to show you, we've got some, we've beefed up the collection. You did it last week on the DL. Yeah. But we've got Out of the Mist now, which is beautiful. I love that sheen on that. Oh, yeah. On Chesterton this week, we've got um, Bottle Green, which I'm not sure is going to show up on camera really well. Oh, it's pretty, good, pretty good. Look at that. Bottle Green. Look at that. And then the new color for this week, Hog Wild, which I am totally in love with. Hog Wild. We'll show it to you on some other bases here shortly. But look at those like speckles and all those colors in it on the super bulky, super pretty Hog Wild. And there's other colors in the shop as well, other colorways yeah. in the shop on Chesterton. So you can select your favorite and go ahead and snag a couple Hanks. And then look at the patterns and snag your favorite looking patterns and have some really super quick FOs. Yeah, I think I'm going to work my way through the knit <clears> patterns. <throat> I can't crochet yet, obviously. But, oh, you just showed. Hi, Sherry. Oh, no, Julie's responding to Sherry. You just highlighted it. Oh, so I, nice didn't, of you. I didn't mean to do that. Look at and that. And I believe May has corrected us. We are both wrong. The yarn is the namesake because it has been named after someone. Okay. So, now, thank you for your correction. It's always good to learn. Yeah. Okay. Now we know. I love it. Thanks, Julie, for your comment. That was an accidental thing that I highlighted it. But thank you. They're talking about the boxes. I'm not sure which mm. box they're talking about. But, um, oh, I highlighted lots of things <laughs> unintentionally. There ain't no telling what would go up there. And Valera said something about a sock knit on. Hmm. Are you reading our minds, Valera? I think she read the newsletter. Oh. <laughs> you are one step ahead of me. One Get step with ahead. It, Carolyn. One step ahead. Well, shall we go ahead and talk about the knit along coming up? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll let you talk about it and introduce it. So here's the thing. March 14th is, as you probably know, known as National Pi Day, which is 3.14 and then an endless string of numbers behind it. So this idea was originally mentioned by Nancy Estinez. Estinez? Sorry, Nancy. I'll just, I'll just slaughter your last name. Estinez, I think. Okay. So I said, you know what? I would like to do it too. So let's, I said to Michelle, can we do a uh, pie day scrappy sock make along? Don't let her judge you. She didn't say, yes. can we? I she said, said, I'd like to, but said, that was your way to say, no, I don't <laughs> think that's a good idea, Carolyn, and here's why. <laughs> Joking. So anyway, the pattern that we're basing it off of is this pattern. It's called Pie Scrappy Striped Socks by Christy Peterson. And she literally tells you, it's a, a pattern that tells you how to make pie scrappy socks. And you it's like can, a recipe, sort it's, of. Yeah. And so it's basically a vanilla sock. And I think you can choose your heel. Um, but she has a chart for you to assign colors if you want for the numbers. And then she has the numbers. But then you can obviously, um, if you're a crocheter, if you know how to crochet socks, you can obviously take this and crochet socks. You're welcome to join us. We'd love it. And then even if you are knitting, you don't have to make it quite as um, formulated as the pattern calls for. For example, <laughs> which one? yeah, exactly. I'm going to, I'm going to start with, I think I'm going to use the same color for my heel, uh, my cuff, heel, and toe on both socks. But that's so unlike you. I know. Well, here's the thing I am doing. I'm not going to assign colors to the numbers. Instead, I'm going to do, I'm going to start with three because it's three. I'm going to pick a color out of my little bag here that I've already set aside stash yarns. And I'm just going to randomly pick one out, do three rows, and then 
Um, I think she talks about how to address the period if you want to include the period and also how to address zeros if you want to do something special for that. But then I'm just going to do, I'll do one row, randomly pick another, and then the four, I'll randomly pick another. And then when I get to my second sock, I'm going to do the same thing, randomly pick colors. Okay. So the only thing that will tie them together, there will be some consistency in colors because this is my stash of colors. So you're still going to do mismatched socks, yes. just a different method and for mismatched. mismatching socks. Yeah, normally I mismatch my cuffs and toes and all that. This time I'm not. I'm mismatching the socks and I'm leaving those consistent. You're hearing it just like I am for the very first time. So anyway, um, that will start Tuesday. It will run four weeks, so until Friday, March 14th. Obviously, you don't have wait, to have Friday, March 14th. I mean, April 14th, thank you. And because it's going to start Tuesday, March 14th, and it will finish Friday, April 14th. And we have a prize to give away at the end. You do not have to have an FO. Obviously, you in true to yarn use fashion, right? <laughs> you do need to use some olive and two you yarn. We appreciate that, and we know you all have some in your stash, if nothing else. Just a little, just a, a little, a little bit of olive and two. Oh, yarn. and then here, I already picked out the prize. She's already got the prize, and it's pretty awesome. I she, let me just clarify. We walked in; it was on my side <laughs> over here, and I was like, "Oh, she's giving me new minis." <laughs> no, no. I picked out some yarns for y'all. A scrappy set of minis and this is what the winner will get is a scrappy set of minis for your next scrappy project very nice yeah, and okay. says she loves the idea for the pie socks love it I'm and glad. we have to thank nancy again because yeah. that was that originally came from her but we just like <laughs> got right on it yeah As so we, i guess should i post a reminder in the yarn and use and then we'll do a graphic the day of how do we do that? I'll go ahead and go, I'll post the graphic today. Okay. So you can, is that, is that all right? Yeah. I'll post the graphic today. Look for the same graphic that's in the newsletter. So it's easily recognizable. And you can post under there that you're in and start posting pictures of some of the scraps you're going to use and all of that. And we'll go from there. We usually choose winners on things like this from that thread. So that's the way that we'll do it this time as well. And if you're a crocheter and you want to crochet, Absolutely. Crocheters are not second class citizens in the yarn you use. They are first class citizens. Everybody's a first class citizen in the yarn you use. Mm -hmm. So we want you in as well. Absolutely. So super excited. So hmm, my socks that I'm doing don't really qualify. So maybe I'll have to start another pair of socks. Yeah. Oh, you could do that pattern with Scrappy Rose. You could. You can take any pattern, really. Or right, well, maybe it will qualify. I'll just start doing scrappy stuff. Because I've been pulling my scraps out more and more for my hexagons. Yeah. So, and I'm like, oh, I love that color. Oh, yeah, I love that color, too. Oh, I love that color. Yeah, I've been realizing with all these scrappy projects going on that I have to add to my scrappy stash. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Faith wants to know if she can do a scrappy shawl instead. <laughs> What is a scrappy sock knit along, technically? <laughs> That's right. It's a, uh, okay, but why not? Yeah. So it's what you're going to do, like you'll do three rows in the one color, one, you know, like you'll do that. Yeah. If you do it in that way, she I'll, was I'll allow it. <laughs> so we did our very first quarterly Zoom meeting for the Beekeepers Quote Club last night, which was a lot of fun. Um, it was great. We had a good turnout and got to see what everybody was working on, either their hexes or something else. And we talked about hexes and how we're going to put them together and all those kinds of fun things. And Faith mentioned that she's doing, this is the year of hugs for her, which is her shawl knitting, oh, because she likes awesome. to give it to people and, and give it to them as a hug, which I think is super sweet. I had forgotten. So you're, right. you're in like when you're, in. you're absolutely in. I love it. So super cool. So we do have new yarn in the shop this week, Hog Wild, which I absolutely adore. Did you get the pun? Did you get the play on words this week? I'm just asking for a friend. I love, love, love Hog Wild, if I can talk. Um, super pretty blue with gorgeous, gorgeous colors. You do not want to pass this up because in case you haven't noticed, sometimes colorways are not as plentiful once they're sold the first time. So you want to go ahead and snag them right now. Beautiful. Can I un un absolutely? Because you got the same skein yeah. twister out there, we can twist it up properly. Yep. So it's really lovely. I love all the colors. So you've got a really nice tonal blue background that runs the gamut from lighter blues 
to darker blues. And then these really pretty, 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 you've got some greens, you've got kind of some rusty reds, some golden tones in there, some kind of robin's egg blue tones in there that is highlighting it. And it's just gorgeous yarn. This too would be really pretty as, um, as color work in a sweater. Yep. And those speckles will really pop because that was what I did one of my um, hexes in. And you see how the speckles really come out. So you will definitely see those pop in your knitwork. Look at you twisting uh, It's not going to be tight enough, like though. That. It's not going to be tight enough, though. See? Well, that one actually didn't that come out too bad. Good. Look at you. Oh, she's a master. Not. Jack, what is that? Jack of all trades, master of none? No, you're definitely a That's master me. of many things. Oops, I'm dropping hexes left and right. Dropping hexes. So anyway, Hogwild is in the shop this week. You really don't want to miss this. Trust me when I tell you it's absolutely beautiful. Um, it's it's just, it's got so much interest in it that will make any project pop. Golden has been restocked in the shop and I brought it to you on Twain today as well as Tolkien. Remember Tolkien is our 50% wool, 50% cotton yarn, which is really nice for warmer climates. So you can see the difference in the colorways there. It's, it's more subtle on golden, I have to say. Some colorways, it's really pronounced like Pomp and Circumstance right. or Riaga. Mm -hmm. Those are really pronounced. But on golden, it's not, it's a little more subtle. It's not as pronounced, Yeah. but really beautiful. So that gives you some options in terms of bases. And then I love what you did this week. She actually pulled out a few of the colorways from the spring minis and dyed them as individual skeins of Alcott. So we've got some of the spring minis on Alcott, but your time is closing. You can still get the spring mini minis for you went like wildfire. So we ended up putting them on pre-order. We've had several, multiple people purchase multiple sets because these are colors that you're going to want to reach for again and again. And they are now on pre-order for just a little while longer. When's that coming down? Sometime next week. I'm thinking around Wednesday. Okay. Around Wednesday, the yes. pre-order for the mini minis of spring will go down. So you want to snag those as well. Be smart. Stash those because you're going to want more of these, I guarantee you, in the middle of the summer. So, yes. May says Hogwild is interesting with golden. Yes, it is. I did not even notice that. Well, it's definitely got until... the golden shades in it. Yeah. So there you go. You can see that together and it definitely ties in really well. Yeah. Blue and yellow is a really fresh combination. Really um, they are complementary colors. If I'm remembering my color wheel right, are they across the way from each other? I think orange and blue. Orange and blue. Okay. I'm yeah. wrong. Yellow and purple. Okay. You would know better. But than I. orange and yellow are right beside each other. So, so they're close. Mm -hmm. And it is a super, super fresh combination. I've seen it in quilts before. And it's Ooh, really yeah. lovely. It's very fresh. Makes me yeah. think of lemons and all kinds of fun things like that. So we had Hexy Palooza last week at Needleworks, which was a lot of fun. We had some yarn to use, no names mentioned, who showed up with their craft suitcases, which was <laughs> awesome, or craft suitcase, which was awesome. She's rolling her eyes right now. She's like, we've talked about this. Anyway, um, no names at all, Tara. So... <laughs> It was great. We had so much fun seeing all the hexes and talking to people and stitching with people. And Karen Gutowski showed up with like, she was like the Santa Claus of Needleworks last week because she, she showed up with gifts. I failed to bring one of mine though. First of all, I just want to mention, she brought me a massive amount of yardage of this really beautiful blue fabric with, um, uh, is it llamas? Is it alpacas? I don't know. It's probably, probably llamas, both. maybe. Maybe both on them. And they were absolutely beautiful. I can't, that fabric is gorgeous. I, I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Really beautiful. And then she gave us these super fun bee themed little things for your card, uh, for your um, cup holders. One says having a ball and then the yarn is, yarn is the bee's knees. That's so cool. So cool. Do you know I've never had car coasters before. So those are immediately going into my car. Gateway drug. That's right. And then I'm in love with Swedish dishcloths. If you've gotten some of our boxes, you may have noticed there's been a Swedish dishcloth in one or two of them. And this one is really beautiful. So if you don't know, Swedish dishcloths are dishcloths that expand. They're, they're firm. And then you get them and you add the water to them. And then you can use them for a long time. And technically, you can wash them in the dishwasher. But they're ultimately disposable. But they're like you know, they're biodegradable material and stuff. That's so, so cool. Very nice. And then this was the funny story kind of look at this. This is 
really cool. Do you, you want to show that and talk about it? I'm talking too much again. Oh, no, you're not. So this is a book stand, which you can use it as a pattern stand. So I'm back, I have a better picture. Okay, well, I was going to pull it out okay. because so they can actually see the design that's on it. I love this because I'm always um, reading whilst doing, well, I thought I would open it. Now I can't get it out. <laughs> it's Carolyn proof. Um, it's basically a book stand and look, can y'all see it's got a B on there, but you can use it for any number of things, cookbooks, patterns, put magnets on it. Yeah. To hold things. Absolutely. So I just thought that was so cool. And she gave each of us one of those, she did. which was absolutely awesome. And yeah. then she brought smelly, nice smelling soaps and all kinds of fun stuff. So it was like Christmas. She just kept yeah. digging into her bag. So okay. thank you very much for that, Karen. It's always great to see you and sweetened even more by the goodies. I'm, right. I'm just blown away. It's like, we don't deserve it. And yet you keep giving us things. So that's super nice of you. Yes. That was a lot of fun. Okay. Let's talk FOs. How many you got? I got none, but let's talk about how many you got. I have one. I'm so happy, but she didn't realize it. I've been walking around her house all morning and all of a sudden we sit down and she's like, oh, you have an FO. I was busy bagging yarn. I was putting away dishes. I was, and I, I'm not a detail person. Have you noticed that ever? Well, you probably haven't. Bo will she's trim his beard person. and then he has to point it out to oh, me. Jim does that to me all the time. Notice anything different? I know, like, uh, no. <laughs> So yes, but once I was like, oh, I love it so much. Well, you're so used to seeing me in a beautifully basic tee. This is true. I mean, that is true because the um, it all continues the the quest to have a whole rainbow of them. Although I'm not sure brown is actually in the rainbow. I don't know. But anyway, my beautifully basic tee is done. I'll kind of stand up. It fits um, perfectly. It fits good. It's a little loose, but I don't I don't hate that. I like it. I blocked it somewhat aggressively so I could get it because I was a little worried about the length, but the length is absolutely perfect. You're not seeing very well here. Um, but anyway, it fits really well. It's super soft and I'm really, really, really happy with it. Um, yeah, it's very soft. I've done mine to date. All of my beautifully basic tees are in Rollins. And so oh, I really yeah. like the way they drape and the little bit of sheen to them. And plus Rollins is just a delight to knit with. So let's, let's go through it. So we have potato peel pie now. We have Pomp and Circumstance. Those are my two neutrals now. Okay. We have Journey's End, which is a blue. We have Happy Hour, mm -hmm. which is a purple, a eye blazing purple. And we have Stinky Pink. So I, that's all I have, I think is five. And you have your next color already? Is that right? No, no? I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm okay. tossing it around. Um, you know, I've always done solid colors. And Don't tell me you're thinking of going I'm, with us. I'm actually thinking, I know this is crazy, but I really like Hog Wild. So maybe, I don't know. The other one is Fingerlings. And the other idea I had was actually Swan White in Tolkien. Remember? That's right. Swan White in Tolkien. Yes. So I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you're thinking. So Hog Wild on Rollins, which means more dying for her. Or... We could do fingerlings on Rollins, which is a kind of a neutral pink, or we could do swan white on Tolkien, which would be my first one in something other than Rollins, which is 50% wool, 50% cotton, which might be nice for summer. So although these are nice for summer too, because they have silk in them, which is really good right. for warmer climates as well. So let me know what you think. Give me, I mean, we've already kind of been through this, but do it again now that I've got three, I've got it narrowed down to three. Okay. Let me know what you think. Let's see. Dora says hog wild sounds amazing. I agree. I think it would be nice to do a speckle. Connie says no white with my hair. Hmm. No swan white with my hair. It probably would kind of drain oh, me yeah, a little good bit. point. Because lo super low contrast like that. Yvette mm -hmm. is very certain about Hog Wild and Sharon persists in calling Swan White Snow White. Um, Karen says, I have a No Limits one almost done. Ooh, I would love to have No Limits. I need to see that, Karen. Yeah. That's not your favorite color to dye. It's just very, Flavor very time consuming. Yeah. consuming and yeah. I bet it's really pretty though because that has so many short runs that it's not, you wouldn't get any pooling with it. I bet you don't have any pooling, right? 
Are yeah. you alter? I'm curious if you're alternating skeins. Oh, that's true. You know, we'd almost have to alternate with one like that. Well, mm -hmm. that's what I was mm -hmm. thinking. My next summer sweater for mm -hmm. our upcoming summer sweater knit along. Shh. Um, I think now I'm you're doing like speckle. me. I know. I thought I'd pull Michelle. <laughs> and um, I thought I think maybe I will try because I have not tried that. What do you call it? Helical, Helical method. Knitting. Yet, or I tried it once and flubbed it and so quit. But um, so I'm thinking maybe I would use the, that opportunity and do to, it. Yeah. Hey, Lydia's here. Lydia's here. We're happy you're here. You missed the talk about the pie, um, scrappy sock knit along. We're getting started. Mm. Kim says hog wild and Tolkien. Interesting. I thought about that. I, yeah, that way you get, you're doing a speckle and you're doing a new base at the same time. That's true. Hmm. Okay. Things that make you go, hmm. Hmm. Yeah. We'll see. But I better decide quick. I should decide before I leave today. I'll tell you today. Okay. How's that? I like it. All right. I have a, a deadline, which is a good thing. Very good. So you want to talk about what you've got in progress? I didn't really make any progress this week um, on any of my other projects because I've been working on featherweight soul machines. And getting those ready because I promise busy. people. Yeah, I promise people featherweights. Um, so I didn't make any other progress, but what I you did. got going on? I didn't make a ton of progress myself, honestly. I did. I was telling the ladies last night that one of the my favorite things um, that I've noticed with the hexes is that I like going through and just doing um, new new colors. They're not new colorways to the shop, but like you know, I don't want to knit the same colored hexy like five times in a row. So I'm alternating. So I did one in Marsh Monster this week. And then I don't know why I have Hog Wild out. I did one in Super Excited. Because we showed Hog Wild and it's gorgeous. That's why you had Hog Wild oh, out. That's why. Love so, this brand new color. It's gorgeous. I did um, one in Raspberry Sorbet. And then I did one that was half and half with Hog Wild and Stinky Pink, which I think I'm going to do more of those. those I really fun. liked that. Yeah. So anyway, I did that this week, added to my little hexy vase back here. And then I did make a tiny bit of progress on my everyday slop chivini, which I think I mentioned to y'all, I'm incorporating the lightning, Tampa Bay lightning logo into the side on both sides. So it's coming out pretty well. I'm basically just holding the swan white Bronte uh, behind the Hiberna on wolf in order to get, you know, kind of like when you trap your floats or what, well, when you're doing color work, I mean, that's what do you basically mean behind? Do you is. not just hold them together? Well, to get this part, yes, you hold them together. But when I want oh, the blue you're to show it, up, okay, I see for the dominant color. Yeah. I just of. carry that okay. white behind it. Um, so yeah. And it's coming out really well. I predict that when you start wearing that to games, people will say, where did you get that? I want one of those. I predict. Let's see, how much can you charge? $2,000. $2,000. <laughs> $2, to make you a lot. No, yeah. <laughs> that, that's my line. line. I know. I stole your line. $2,000. I'm steal everything from you today. I know. You know, flattery is the that's highest right. form of compliment, isn't that what they say? Or, no. Um, imitation, imitation is the highest form of flattery. I can't that's even right. get my words right. Oh, I might be up at 5 o'clock in the morning, but my brain is not engaged that early. Just yeah, say I it. Oh, show that again. Okay. Maria's hexy that she did last week for you with the crocheted wings to make a bee. Yes. So she put little beads for the eyes and then she crocheted two wings on it. And it's just a tiny bit bigger than my hexies, but I held my hexies up next to it. And I think it will totally work. You can make it work. Yeah. It's, this will be the center of the blanket. How cool so, is that? So awesome. Very, very cool. Very, very fun. Well, the Yarny Yous have been working on stuff this week for sure. There is no shortage of whips um, in the group. So we're going to take a quick look and see what you all have been working on. And hopefully they all showed up this week. Every reason to dance. Okay, let's take a look here. So Shannon, she's been crocheting some socks, new socks on the hook, using colors Love Bites on Twain and Eggplant and Alcott. Mm -hmm. I like it. Mm -hmm. So she's doing a Brianna K design. Very cool. Very nice. 
Here we've got Carol. She's her own take on her hexi um, blanket. And she's combining a temperature blanket with hexagons. How fun is that? Excellent. I like that multitasking. Yes. So Laura had mentioned that she was really happy to see Egg Hunt come back to the shop. That was last week, right? Mm -hmm. That Egg Hunt came back and she showed one of her, her previous FOs with it from two years ago, the unconditionally shawl. And she put the pattern link in the comments. So if you're looking for that, just do a quick search in the yarn to use. Egg Hunt is such a pretty, pretty colorway with a really neutral background with beautiful pops of spring colors. Mm -hmm. Works out well. Mary working on pom-pom socks in summer madness on Twain with a coordinating mini from her stash. I love it. So that's pretty cool right there. And then um, Starlet, she um, went ahead and finished up her socks with, those were pumpkin spice. No, pumpkin, um, pumpkin harvest. harvest. <laughs> yes. Can't read. We had too many pumpkin colorways. Lots of pumpkin colorways going on. And then Anne, of course, with her socks. Hoping Anne feels better today. Yes. I think she and her husband both have COVID. Hopefully they're doing a lot better. Pretty socks. You can't keep a sock lady down. Nope. And the, oh, look, Shannon socks again. <laughs> they really wanted to be seen this week. And then Lonnie, she's about at the halfway point or was as of yesterday. The Delight Scarf by Laura Nelkin. Feeling saucy and sour, Puss and Alcott and Felice Navidad on O. Henry. So she's working through the 12 bases for the 12, um, the challenge, the yarn challenge this year. Several of you are doing that, which is a lot of fun. And then Cindy finished this beautiful child size sweater, but really came out super well. I thought um, she used Bloom and the Cliff Walk. Cliff Walk was yeah. the colorway that she used. That turned out really well. It's gorgeous. Super, super fun stuff. It's always fun to see what you all, you all, see what we did there, E-W-E all, are doing in the yarn to use. It's always a lot of fun. So keep posting. And don't forget, every month we actually give away a prize if you use the hashtag all of the two you projects. Hashtag. That was a little redundant. The hat. If you use the all of and to you hashtag, all of and to you projects hashtag. I'm just going to stop talking then. <laughs> No, you're not. It's time to go to bed. Anne says she's feeling somewhat oh, good. better. So that's good. Lonnie thought your ears were bunny ears on your hexi, apparently. No, those are bee wings. Bee wings. Bee wings. Hey, the Knit for Food um, Knit Along is coming up March 26th. We've got a team and you all are contributing. So thank you very much for your donations to that. The link is in your newsletter. We're going to be having an event at Needleworks at 5151 Lake Howell Road at St. Richard's Episcopal Church in our community crafting space on that Sunday from 1030 until 230. Come on in and let's knit together, make your donation, and we'll have the Zoom up on the big screen from the um, nationwide push for Knit for Food. So I've been playing to figure out how to get the Zoom up there. I can do it. So we'll make sure that happens. Having that big screen at Needleworks is, is nice, I think. Yeah. So, um, and if you're not local, we're sorry you can't join us there at Needleworks, but you can definitely contribute. Our team is, is starting to pull up a little bit. So thank you very much for your donations. We want to try to do our part with our craft to help stamp out food insecurity for those um, who are not as fortunate as most of us. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Hey, what about Die Live? Oh, we had fun last night. Not last night. It's Thursdays. Thursdays. It was Thursday night. Uh, we dyed up an excellent colorway. I'm going to show it. So if you are in the Die Live group and haven't had a chance to watch the video, then you might want to close your eyes, close your ears for just a minute because I'm going to show it. We dyed up. We had a good time dying up the twist. Here it is the on twist. the beast. And it's actually brighter than it's showing up on camera. A little okay. brighter. A little bit. Yeah. And then to go with it, uh, Twist Again. If y'all know the Chubby Checker song, uh, this was Bo's idea to call it Twist Again. So you see how it looks purple. However, when you look at the skein, if you, you know, look in the finer details, you can see there, it is a combination of this pink and blue speckled so that there's a pink undertone there and then blue on top of it, which gives you that bright purple. It has a really interesting effect to it, I have to say. Yeah. I love the effect. And then we also did Swan White because it is such a great foil. Look at that. That's amazing. Um, so if you would like, you don't have to be in Dye Live to get 
the coordinating colors. Um, and then we also have it available in Alcott and Hawthorne. If you buy it there, you get a set of um, each, Twist Again and Swan White. So the link is in your newsletter. You don't have to be actually mentioned in Die Live to have access to the coordinating cousins as they're called. And this is a beautiful, beautiful colorway. You know, it actually doesn't even, I mean, it, it kind of works. Look. Oh yeah, you could totally. It absolutely that. works with Hog Wild as well. It really does. Very Because cool. the blues are in there. I love it yeah. so much. So definitely a bold colorway. It's almost like a cobalt blue with those bits of pink. Yeah. Jim would love this. Um, but I won't do a vest in this color. I'd be a little, I'd be a little loud for him. Be a little much for him. A little much for my my very conservative husband. Um, but yeah, so you can snag this. The link is in your newsletter this week. So you can go ahead and grab that. That's only available on pre-order for a limited time. Yes. Would you like to see the Needleworks colorway? Yes! All right. Now, this too is a spoiler. So if you don't want to see it because it's ready um, to be put into Michelle's hands to be shipped out. So if you don't want to see it, if you pre-ordered it and don't want to see it, then turn away. Okay? Go away. Because this is it. Let me take off the... I'm just now seeing it. Yeah. I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I love it. I use the sign as inspiration. Um, and so you see some blue, some pink, and some of that char chartreuse green uh, on that more of a neutral background. Did you tie me in it up? Um, there are some extra skeins because I don't know if you remember, you and I talked about um from here on out, we, it will be offered exclusively at, at Needleworks. Needleworks. Okay. So there are some extra skeins to go into the shop. And then, of course, if you That's want. our own exclusive colorway that's at right. Needleworks. We got our own. Very cool. I named it Community since oh, it is that's a great. community crafting space. And yeah. I, I love it. Colorway. Yeah, I was very pleased with how it. Really, out. really pretty. Oh, that's almost got that oatmeal -y color on the bottom. Yeah. yeah, it does. So Anne is suggesting that um, BBT on Twist Again for me. It might I might be know. a little bit close to happy hour, though. It, well, it's bluer than happy hour, it is. but that's really bright. Yeah, happy <laughs> hour really shows you the purple and the pink, whereas this you can see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it, it, it is bright for you. But yeah, I mean, there'd be good contrast with your hair. What do you think with the silver hair? It does look good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Something else to think about. Yvette says you're a whiz with color. She is a whiz with color. So, yeah. How gorgeous is that? Oh, I love it so much. Thanks. Yeah, I was, I thought I wouldn't mind having a pair of socks in that. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. And then you could do the other colors like um, pickled peppers. Yep. So I'm going to do a mini set, by the way. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but we'll do a, a Needleworks mini set as Yay! well. Yay! So we'll, we'll get there. That's so exciting. Hey, speaking of Needleworks, we've got classes coming up, two of which are completely sold out now. So, but this coming Friday, we still have one or two spaces available for our Cranky Socks class. Mary Nielsen is going to be teaching that, the original Cranky You. She'd probably appreciate it if I'd stop calling her that. No, nah, I don't know. think she's fun. She's... Um, so she'll teach you how to take a Cranky Sock kit and turn it into socks magically, like with a twinkle of the nose. That's what she's going to be talking all about, how to twinkle your nose. And included in the class price is your Cranky Sock kit of your choosing. So that's really fun. If you want to do that class, the link is in your newsletter and you can sign up now. The other two classes, the Japanese rice bag and the needle book embroidery class are both sold out. We are still working on Knit 101 and Crochet 101 that we'll be offering there at Needleworks. And we've got some other classes in mind and things happening. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned because our goal is to have lots of different classes there at Needleworks in our community space. So you can come in, learn a fun new skill, dip your toe in the pond of a new fiber craft and that sort of thing. So we're working on um, wool felting, which would be fun. And, you know, you make the little animals and stuff like that. Yeah. So good times. And then I'll mention it again. We're not quite ready to announce dates or how it's going to work, but our featherweight class is still in development um, for kind of the maintenance. And then our featherweight club where you'll be able to come in and bring your featherweight and stitch together. And then we'll be having a new featherweight box that will be coming out on a regular basis. So those are still in development because we'll make sure and get it just right. And we're really, really excited about that. So super, super fun times. 
super fun times. Yvette says she needs to get some hog wild for another BBT. There you go. It's in the shop now. Don't forget, if you're ever in the shop and you're looking around and you're like, oh, I really need this colorway and I want it on this base, but oh, they don't have it. All you have to do is shoot me an email, three or more Hanks. We can set up a special order and she gets it done pretty quickly. I know. I mean, you're not waiting like six weeks for no. anything. It's like maybe a couple weeks generally. Yeah. No promises, but it it, it happens. I, I try quick. to get those done pretty pretty quickly and yeah. get those out the door. So if you need some Hanks, let us know. That's a lot of fun. Um, Stitch night at Needleworks. This is one of those interesting weeks you pointed out, right? Yeah. So Stitch night in person at Needleworks is this Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. at our location at our community um, crafting space. And then also virtual knit crochet spin and weave in is on Zoom this week on Wednesday night with Maria. Beautiful. So all kinds of of opportunities for stitching with friends and getting together because that's always how it's that much fun. Yeah. Always good to share the fun. Sharon says featherweight and boxes be still my heart. Oh yeah. And you're going to go crazy for the box because it's going to really give you what you need to do some super fun projects and all kinds of things. Because once you have a featherweight, you're kind of in a club anyway. Um, because they're such special little machines. So we're working on those, getting those out. If you are on the list for a featherweight, that the list is growing daily, um, then we'll be getting to you kind of as a first come first serve basis. I'll be contacting you to set up an appointment as soon as they're ready, which will probably be sometime later this week or next week. I'll be contacting you to make an appointment to come in and select your baby and adopt it right there but I'm making sure all the documentation is with it and that it's all um, really well done. So you'll know exactly what you're getting. Awesome. So, That's excellent. Lots of fun. Hey, I have so something non-yarn related. It just occurred to me. Uh, Connor and Morgan are right as we speak, sitting, taking the SAT test. So if, if y'all have a quick second, say a prayer. Say a prayer. I think they, you know, homeschool kids are not, we don't test quite as much as others. And so when they do test, they get really, so, but they've been practicing and studying for it. And so I'm sure they'll be fine, but I just happen to think of them. Good deal. Yeah. I just thought of something that I didn't mention. I didn't put on the list. No. Oh. So the stuff that we got in from Brooklyn Haberdashery, like, zoop, it was like lightning out the door. You all loved that. I was able to place another order yesterday. So we've got more goodies coming. I might put some of them on pre-order. Oh, I don't know. Maybe yeah. um, we're getting a few new things. Um, some are repeats of what we had, and one of the things is not a repeat, and you're going to want it, so pay attention. And there's only right. three of them coming. So um, they're a really neat product. So yeah, I really loved those red scissors that some of y'all got. Those are awesome. Yes, the snappy red yeah. scissors. Those yeah, are, yeah. Awesome. Very cool. So stay tuned. There'll be more of that. Tara says adoption paperwork for featherweights. Nice. Featherweights, yeah. Well, yeah, because so, they're like little babies. They speak their name yeah. to you, and... They're just little babies, little babies. Do they have names? No. Okay. You have to name them. You name them. Okay. Their, their, their name is Featherweight. Right. But like when I tried mine, I, I purchased mine from Linda Essler. She was kind enough to offer me a test drive and I brought it home. And like within 24 hours, she told me her name was Penelope. I'm like, her name is Penelope and she is remaining with me. It came to you. It came to me. Like cars, cars sometimes speak their name to you. Yeah. Featherweights are the same way. So yeah, so That's look for more cool. stuff coming soon about other ways. I love it. All right. Do we have anything else? I don't know. Did you check the list? Did we check the list? Check it at twice. Going to find out who's naughty and nice. That's right. So yeah, I, I see you guys snagging the hog wild. You really don't want to miss out on this. It's beautiful. Oh, there's one. So mystery whimsies. Oh yes. Um, That's the, where you get to choose uh, the base and the primary color that you want to see color family the color family that you want to see in the yarn and then i dye a whimsy well in the come in sets of two so i dye two or more whimsies for you the all the same colorway unless you choose a different one and some of you have so yeah. we've had people doing multiple whimsies in multiple color families and i think that's really cool yeah that's a lot of fun so but that will go down this sunday tomorrow so if you want to have your own mystery whimsy, then um, get your order in today or tomorrow. Yep. Get it in. And if you are on the fence about another colorway, now's the time to just dive in head first and do it. She never disappoints. So do your mystery whimsies. Hey, do a mystery whimsy BBT plan. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> hmm. 
don't trust me, eh? I trust you. I just I'm not doing that. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think I would do that either, honestly. But I think it's a great idea. I might do it down the road, but I'm trying to build my sure my collection, right? Yeah. So I'm just gonna get rid of all my clothes except BBTs. No, there you go. A BBT just kidding. wardrobe. Jim would like that. I'd be like, more room for me in the closet. We've been cleaning out for Lent. Oh, so nice. one item a day, theoretically, goes in the bag for donation. And we gave up red meat. So, Did you? Yeah, we're all about fish right now. Fish, chicken, turkey, but predominantly fish. Nice. So for What's Lent. your favorite fish? Um, well, if we're talking straight fish, I think cod. I really like cod. Yeah. I mean, it's like the workhorse of the fish world, right? But I really like cod. Last night I did a roasted cauliflower, which was fabulous. I learned clues about roasting cauliflower I'd never heard of, like preheat your baking sheet. And I mixed it with olive oil, smoked paprika, salt, pepper. And then at the end, you mix in a little bit of shredded Parmesan and some fresh parsley. Mm. And it was, you get it really nice and charred. I did that with a um, kind of a chili lime baked cod Ooh. that was really good. But I'm I'm a big fan of shellfish too, shrimp, shrimp, scallops, yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. So, but but because it's Lent and Sunday's feast days, you can have your whatever you gave up. So we go big, have a big fat nasty steak on Sundays. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. There you go. Lonnie likes tilapia, tuna, and mahi-mahi. Oh, okay. Yep, absolutely. So, yeah. I don't, yeah. I, I don't know how I got on that. I'm sorry. You're talking about giving things away. Yes, giving Lent things away then... for Lent. But not my BBTs. Those are not going away. Yes, absolutely not. Awesome. Is that all we got? I think that's all we got. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Don't forget, if you haven't already, you do want to subscribe. Hit the thumbs up so you get notifications. We'll see you in the Yarn and Use, and I see you guys ordering. So we'll get these things out lickety split to you um, and get that taken care of. We are so grateful for you and all of the support that you give us all the time. It means the world to us. We're so grateful for this community. Um, it just, it's everything. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you in the Yarn and Use. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>